Today we are doing a useless yellow hardcore nuzlock. This game was submitted by one of my viewers, the Black Quill. He has been on stream for some time and wanted me to play as a modified version of Pokemon Yellow. With that being said, most of the good Pokemon are not available, so we are left mostly with trash. Let's start. Our starter is obviously Pikachu. We also got ourselves a Pidgey. Before we can continue, this old man tries to teach us how to catch Pokemon. As little does he know, I already bet Radical Red with hard Kanazlik rules. Afterwards, we got Ditto, Golduck, and a Paris. Now, the first major change is the Gauntlet theme, leaned on the garbage green ROM hack from Pokemon Challengers. The difference is that you are still capable of using your items, so they made it still rather easy. The only problem is still PP management, so that was a new thing for me. Anyway, it's time for Brock. He leads with Geodude, which only knows Tackle, so we leave with Pidgey and start spamming Sand Attack. Afterwards, we switch into Pikachu and growl it to minus 6 as well. Then we switch into Paras and just try to chip it down with Scratch. Yeah, that shit was tedious as fuck. But at the end, we did it. Next comes in his Onyx. So we switch into Pidgey and get Binded. We switch into Pikachu, Growl, go back into Pidgey and start Sand attacking again. We repeat the process until we are dead to crit on Pidgey and Pikachu. Then we switch into Paris and start scratching and pivot to Golduck, if it goes to bit. When we are running out of PP, we switch to Ditto and transform. Pro tip, Ditto is an insanely good Pokemon for Brock and Misty, but you gotta, unlike me, transform before you cripple him on down. Anyways, after spamming moves and with like 5% damage, at the end we were able to defeat Brock and get our first batch. Afterwards, we get to the next gauntlet and catch ourselves a female and male Nidoran. Oh yeah, we got a fossil, which we can't resurrect. But hey, we can fight Team Rocket's Jesse and James and just smash them into the ground, so that was fun. Our next encounter is a Venonet. That's that. Anyway, it's time for Misty. At the beginning, we spam Horn Attack on Staryu, and after we defeat it, we switch into our Ditto and go for Transform. Then we start spamming Bubble Beam while the AI just spams Harden and Tackle. So yeah, that's that. Easy second patch. Afterwards, we meet our rival in the next gauntlet. Yeah, Psyduck just demolishes our rival. That's that. No question at. Just take the W. Our next encounters are Growlithe and Charmander. Pikachu finds this talking Pokemon in the random house, until we find out it's Bill. But he's nice and gives us a ship ticket for helping him out. Next we get a Weedle and an Old Rod, where we can also get a Magic Cup. Afterwards, we have to fight our rival again, so we do the same spiel again, but switch after his Eevee cripples us down. Nidoran handles this quite well with Double Kick, so that's that. Afterwards, we get the HM cut for rubbing the captain's back. Oh yeah, we also got a Meowth and a Motor. Now comes the hardest gym battle in my opinion. We send in Paras, get mega kicked, and then Sport. Afterwards, we switch into Pikachu and start spamming Flash as much as we can. Then we got a Sack Charmander, so we spam Leer until we get defeated by Raichu. What I can say, you gotta Sack sometimes. Afterwards, we switch into Voltorb and defeat the 10 Surge with two Sonic Booms. Thanks, Charmander. Our next encounters are Magnemite, Cubone, and Sandshrew. Yeah, you see, nothing interesting happens, so we go straight to Erika. We leave with Pidgeotto and try to deal damage. Sadly, Tangela is cancer, so we gotta switch into Growlithe and start dealing major damage. We do the same thing to her Weeping Bell, but then we decide to switch and get hit by an insane crit sludge and Razor Leaf. We then have to sack our Paras to get Cuffing freely in. At the end, we just spam Sludge before we switch into Ditto, but luckily it didn't crit. We transform and defeat it and at the end with a combination of Sludge and Selfit Sphere Confusion. While we were trying to visit the game corner, we found a Rocket Grunt, which we made a short process with, but then we find out there is an underground basement from this organization, so yeah, we demolished all the grounds. But when we were traveling the elevator down, we could jump with Jesse and James once again. Not as if they were a threat or anything, what the fuck. After that, we found Giovanni. But yeah, his grunts are mostly a bigger problem than he is. We Oko his two months and then demolish his Persian with coughing. Afterwards, he leaves us with a demoscope, so that's nice. 
Oh no, not this guy again. Can you just accept that this is not how it works? I don't know, he really grinds my gears. But whatever. Another free boss fight in our pocket. We found the dead Marowak, so we just destroyed with gold deck. Yeah, that's a tweet, that's it. Team Rocket tries the shenanigans again, but as always, it didn't work. Like, what do you expect? We save Mr. Fuji and get the Poke Flute. Obviously, we're gonna use it on the Snore. Ah. Ditto, I guess. Anyway, after we reach the Safari Zone, we encounter an Execute and Catch. You know what? Whatever. Just give him the gold teeth and surfer gem, thank you. By the way, there's this one trainer in Koga's gym with a Hypno level 38. Be careful, he only nearly wiped me in both my attempts. Here he is, by the way. So I'd rather go this way. Wait, can I just surf here? Huh? Huh? Yeah, we, we kinda lost some progress, so we had to do the redo the gym battle, I guess. Koga is not as big of a problem as his gym trainers are. We leave with Meow and just try to deal as much damage as possible with Slash. So at the end we sack it, go for gold luck, spam confusion and win the battle. As you can see, you need Surf, which you get from this guy. But you can just run back to Lavandia, skip the Biker Gondol and go straight to Saffron, where a big challenge and Gondol awaits you. If you're prepared, you should be fine though. It's once again time for the rival battle. We lead with Golak and... well... <laughs> that's that. Apart from some switcheroo stuff, this fight is mostly free if you have a Golak and an Electric type. Nothing hard to worry about to be honest. Maybe the Kadabra, but it's easily done for a physical attacker. Jolteon wasn't a problem either, just no resistance matchups. We also fight once again against Jesse and James, but as always, it's a freebie and nothing to worry about. Especially with a gold duck. Now, we gotta save Sylvko from Giovanni. Yeah, let's save. We just steamroll over him with gold duck. But for our troubles, we get a Master Ball. But before we continue, we get ourselves a Flying Edge Gem. Our next challenge, after saving Saffron City, is Sabrina. Normally, you can just sweep her with a Beeperl, because it's mostly faster and is super effective against Psychic types. Yeah, no, Twin Heal isn't 100% accurate in this game, so we lose it. We also lose our Pidgeotto against the Alakazam, but with a close call, we manage to defeat with our MVP Golok. Yeah, we got a Krabby. Nothing to brag about to be honest. We can step into the 7th gym before we finish the puzzle in this spooky mansion, so we gotta get the key. Luckily, that's easy, so we go straight to Blaine. Blaine is super easy. I thought Magikarp would be actually useful for once, but the dumb bee gets crit. Whatever. We go in with Golok and 2 tap the Ninetales. Rapidash also gets damaged, but then we gotta switch it to Tentacool and back into Golot to take care of the fire spam. Arcanine is last, but we deal not enough damage and are now dead to crit. So we switch into Sentru, lower Bladen's ace HP with its own takedown, sack it and defeat it with a last surf of gold luck. Thank you Sentru. Now let's get to the last batch. We gotta fight Giovanni. He leads with Ductrio, while we leave with our Wattle and go straight for surf. Luckily, this time, unlike in the first attempt, it doesn't go for Fischer, so we can luckily take it out. Next is his Persian. We switch to James and tank a critical slash. We get crit another time, but hit afterwards a massive sludge and also poison it. We have to switch, so we send a Nidorina. While Giovanni goes for guard specs? I don't know. Anyway, Persian goes for double team, while we miss. Afterwards it goes for Screech, and then Lin connects with a double kick. His third Pokemon is Nidoqueen. We have to stay in and go for Growl, but he guards backs, so it gets negated. Next we try to bite, but he hits us with a massive EQ, so that's that. Thank you, Lin. Next we go for Nicole and Sleep Pilot, but before we get tail whipped. 
afterwards we start spamming Razor Leaf and after the third one Nidoqueen luckily goes down. Giovanni's next Pokemon is Nidoking, which goes for Leer while we hit another Sleep Powder. After that we switch into Golak and after two Surfs we defeat it. Last is his Rhydon, which also gets one hit KO'd by our Golak. That's the last batch. What do I gotta say? 8 batches but still 0 bit. Now we encounter our rival once again. He leads with Sand Slash, which gets demolished by Misty. His second one is on Execute, so we go for Confusion while it lead cheats us. Afterwards, we send in our Growlithe, which dodges a Stun Spore. Anyway, one Flamethrower is enough to make some Cook decks. Next is Ninetales. It goes for Tail Whip while we spam Bites. He tries to roar us, but at the end, it gets owned by Bites. Our rival's fourth Pokemon is a Cloyster, so we switch into Pikachu, dodge the Supersonic and hit it hard with a Thundershock. Now we got clamped, so we can't do shit. And after struggling, we finally get free, but Cloyster survives on literally 1 HP and hits us with Supersonic. Now the safest play is to switch in Golak, but we get again supersonic We try to go for a Confusion and we hit. His second last Pokemon is Kadabra, so we switch into Lickitung, while he just goes for Reflect. We then try to use Stomp, but get outsped and get hit with a massive Psychic, which crits and kills our Lickitung. We switch back into Golak and go for Surf. Now, it's a battle of whom is tankier. For whatever reason, the AI doesn't use Psychic now, so we win this tough battle. His ace is Jolteon, so we switch into Cubone while he agilities. He hits us with Pin Missile, but they do nothing. It's our turn and Bottom Run nearly gets Jolteon down. We then go for Headbutt for a 100% accurate move and defeat our rival. Bro, Psychic types are so insane, no joke. Now our last important encounter for this game is Seal. Yeah, you heard that right. Seal is an important encounter. So it's time, let's go over our E4 team. First Pikachu. Yeah, I know, kinda basic. We get like 3 electric types in this game, Voltorb, Magnemite and Pikachu. And I gotta say, Pikachu is by far the best. Voltorb might be faster, but Pikachu has slightly more special attack, which makes it capable of one-shotting or two-shotting some Pokemon Voltorb isn't capable of. Yeah, this is Pikachu's entire worth in this team, one-shotting some Pokemon with Thunderbolt, ATM which we got in the course of the run. Second is obviously Goldug. <laughs> yeah, this thing. I learned to love it in Radical Red with Neuro Force. This thing is insane. It's by far the best water Pokemon, which also gets coverage with Strength and Confusion. Yeah, you heard that right, I use Golduck with Strength. In case you don't get or lose it, Seedra also works. Third is Weeping Bell. Weeping Bell is crucial for D4. It's actually not necessary for the first three fights, but boy, this thing can do mad work. With Sleep Powder, good pivoting and also being able to use and learn Mega Drain for tricky situations, it's actually a good Pokemon. Execute might be better, but you can also get it mostly in the Safari Zone where it can flee. Fourth is Weezing. I love Weezing. It's the best poison type in this game in my opinion. It's insanely bulky, is a good toxic user and can 1v1 most of the e 4s aces. Its biggest usage is for the E1 and E4 fight. Fifth is Venomoth. Yeah, never thought I'd say that. Venomoth is not that good of a Pokemon, but it naturally learns Psychic, which makes it nearly a sweeper against E3. You might get hexed away, but you still have 5 other months to handle the problems. It can also be useful against Lands with Seed Polar. Sixth is Seal. Yeah, I was not joking. Seal is the most crucial Pokemon in this team. I team built like 7 hours for both attempts combined. And without Seal, I wouldn't know how to win this. You can manage E1, E2 and E3, and even the champion fight is manageable. But Lance is another story. His Pokemon have no weaknesses which we can abuse, apart from some Pokemon learning maybe Icy Wind. It also learns Ice Beam, and outspeeds both of his Dragonairs. Seal also gives you a good setup for the E1 fight. Yeah. This is our team, so with no further ado, let's jump into the final of Useless Yellow. Our first fight will be against Lorelei. She leads with Dugong, so we lead with Seal. We headbutt and do this until it rests. Afterwards, we switch into Pikachu and start going for Thunderbolt. 
we repeat this process until she sends on Jinx. Afterwards, we switch in Goldark, dodge a lovely kiss and go for strength. Double slap. Ha! <laughs> nice damage. Another strength entered. Last is her Lapras. We go for another strength while we get hit with a confusion. Afterwards we hit another critical one, but she hits us with body slam. Then we hit ourselves and get crit. We switch into Weezing where she misses a Hydro Pump. And then we go for a Sludge and take the first win. Next is Bruno, the second E4. This fight... Well, <laughs> it's not really a fight. There are only happening two things. We attack with Surf or Confusion. Yeah, that's literally that. That's Bruno. The weakest E4 in probably the entire franchise. The third fight will be against the Gaffer. Like I mentioned before, this fight is... Let's just say as unproblematic as it can be if you don't get attacks away. We lead with Menemoth and just press Psychic. Over and over and over and over. You might get paralyzed, but that's probably the biggest threat in this fight. So yeah, that's 3 force down and 0 deaths down the line. Now we get to the most scary fight in this game, Lance. He leads with Gyarados, so we send him Pikachu and one shot it with Thunderbolt. Next is Dragonair. Lance has two Dragonairs. One has Electric and the other one has Ice Courage. Luckily, this one is the Electric Dragonair. So, we switch in Weeping Bell, dodge the Hyper Beam crit, and go for Sleep Powder. Afterwards, we start to use Mega Drain and Sleep Powder again if it wakes up. Then, we switch into Seal. The problem with this fight, we Oko and our speed, but die to Thunderbolt or Hyper Beam crit. So, we gonna make them sleep before. After we defeat both Dragoners, Aerodactyl comes in, so we switch into Golok and start using Surf, while he misses an Hyper Beam. The next one hits hard, but then we can luckily defeat it. Last is his Monster Dragonite with Hyper Beam, Thunder, Blizzard and Fire Blast. We switch into Weezing and dodge a Fire Blast, and luckily hit a Toxic. We then get hit and burn with Fire Blast. Afterwards, we go for one smoke screen, but he hits us still with a Blizzard. We then have to make the choice, what are we going to do? The best play would be to send in Janine and Zack, but Dragonite misses the Fire Blast. This means we can Psychic and crit, dodge the crit on Fire Blast, and Dragonite dies to Toxic Poison. Man, this fight was clutch, no joke. So now it's time for the last battle against our final rival and new champion Quill. We leave with Golduck and two shot the Sand Slash. Next is Alakazam, which as teased before, gets destroyed by our strength using Golduck. Next is Executor, so we switch into Weeping Bell, but get Sleep Powered, however that is possible. We then try to wake up, and try to hit it with some assets, but at the end we have to switch it to Venomoth. We once again get Sleep Powered and Barrage on, but at the end we wake up and can finally defeat this thing. Next is his Cloister, where we get obviously Crit Clamped. So we switch into Prize and start wearing it down with Growl, Headbutt and Rest strategies. Then his Ninetale is coming soon. He goes for Quick Attack while we use some Headbutts. Afterwards he goes for Confused Ray, where we hit ourselves one time but can rest again. It becomes an annoying fight where we try to deal damage, but at the end we had to switch into Golak and defeat it. Last is his Jolteon, where I just really had no good counter against this thing. So, yeah, I actually stayed in with Golak and attacked it. It actually funneled us but didn't crit. We then have to sack Golak. Thank you dude, you are the best. And with that sacrifice we can get in Weezing for free and defeat Jolteon with a sludge. And if anyone is asking themselves why I couldn't send in Weezing without any hesitation, in this game Bug attacks are super effective against poison for whatever reason. So I can't send it in because it's pin myself. So yeah, that's how we want to use the yellow heart colossal. I would say it's actually a balanced game, apart from the gen 1 mechanics. Those are just insanely bad and unhealthy. So I would recommend you playing this game. Links to the Google Drive is down in the description. And with that, that's the video on how I bet uses yellow with heart colossal rules. Thank you guys, we'll see each other in the next video. Bye bye. Well, I gotta say, I never expected you guys to be actually useful in the nozzle. So, thank you, I guess. You've seen nothing.